Windows Media Services in Windows Server 2008 allows you to manage and present your media to your users. This can be in the form of live or on demand. The advantage of using Windows Media Services rather than just a normal web page is you can throttle the bandwidth. On a traditional website, the user clicks a link and the file is downloaded to their computer. The file size is fixed and they cannot watch any of the content till the completed file has downloaded. Using Windows Media Services, the user can start viewing the content straight away and the data rate can be changed according to the speed of their internet connection. Doing this better uses your bandwidth on your network. If the user decides to stop the media, no more data is transferred. In the other case, the user downloads the complete file and may only watch a small part of it. The media can also be paused, fast forward and rewound by the user. This applies to on-demand media. However, live media can be archived and accessed like this at a later date. Web pages can use embedded content to access the media on Windows Media Services, making it even easier for the user. The user accesses the media using an embedded media player on a website, complete with media controls. Windows Media Services supports two protocols for accessing media. The first, Real-Time Streaming Protocol, provides an efficient method to access video and audio content. Real-Time Streaming Protocol, or RTSP, requires Windows Media Player 9 or later. RTSP has UDP support if the client and network support it. Otherwise, TCP will be used. The ports used can be changed if they do not meet your network requirements. The second protocol supported by Windows Media Services is HTTP. This runs over port 80, which is the default for web services. If you have an existing web server, when you install Windows Media Services, you will get a port conflict and may need to do some reconfiguring to get both services to work with each other. In order to try and reduce the amount of needed network bandwidth, Windows Media Services supports multicast. Multicast allows one network packet to be sent to many computers. This is best used for live media since on-demand features like pause and rewind do not work with multicast. Multicast can work well on a company in which support for multicast is set up correctly. On the internet, multicast is difficult to support as it requires the network it travels over to support it as well. Otherwise, Windows Media Services can use Unicast to deliver media. Unicast delivers content on a one-to-one -one basis, but has the advantage that the user can control content by allowing them to pause, rewind, and fast-forward the media. The disadvantage to Unicast is that it uses more bandwidth, but in a lot of cases, it may be the only choice. Windows Media Services is an add-on to Windows Server 2008 and available for download from the Microsoft website. Look for KB934518. It can be installed on standard, enterprise, or data center editions of Windows Server 2008 on either the full or server core editions. If you plan on running Windows Media Services on Windows Server 2008 Standard Edition, some features will not be available. Check the Microsoft website for more details. Windows Media Services comes in three separate components. The main component is Windows Media Server, which provides streaming audio and video features. This component also provides an administrative tool. You can install the optional component, Web-Based Administration, if you prefer to administer Windows Media Services from your web browser. This does require ISS to be installed as well. Windows Media Services also offers an optional logging agent that collects statistics and performance details from your end user. Windows Media Services is installed as a role through Server Manager, but before it will be available for install, you need to install an add-on from Microsoft, which you can download from their website. The install is a simple one, but if you get a message saying this update does not apply to your system, you may have downloaded the wrong update or the update is already installed. Once installed, go to your Start menu and run Server Manager from Administrative Tools. Select Roles and then go down to Add Roles. The update has added a new option, Streaming Media Services. Select this option and press Next. There are three components to Streaming Media Services. I will go ahead and add the other two components and also add the prerequisites when prompted. You will notice that Real-Time Streaming Protocol will be available but Hypertext Transfer Protocol is not available. Since I selected the web-based administration tool, I cannot add the Hypertext-based protocol as they use the same port. If you need the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, go back and remove the other optional components 
and install Windows Media Server component by itself. The wizard will also give me the option to add additional ISS components if I wish. I will accept the defaults and move on. Windows Streaming Media Services will now be installed. One problem you may have later on after installing Windows Media Services is that Windows Server 2008 does not have Windows Media Player installed by default. Without Windows Media Player, when troubleshooting problems on your server, you will not be able to play any media. Depending on your needs, this may be okay, but may make troubleshooting harder. To install Windows Media Player, open Server Manager again, and this time, select Features. Select the option, Add Features, and from the list, select Desktop Experience. This will install Windows Media Player, making troubleshooting Windows streaming services a little easier. After the install, you will be required to reboot your server. Desktop Experience also installs desktop themes. But don't worry, these features need to be enabled before they will start working. Installing Desktop Experience on your Windows Server 2008 machine will give you a lot of features of Windows Vista. But unless you enable these features, your Windows Server 2008 computer will still look like Windows Server 2008. This is great because all I wanted was Windows Media Player. I don't want my server slowed down by a lot of desktop features that I do not need. To manage Windows Media Services, you can use either the Admin Console or the Web-based Admin Console. Both tools provide the same features. The Web-based tool is a better choice if you are managing Windows Media Services from remote. In this course, I will be focusing on the Admin Console, but let's have a quick look how to use the Web-based Admin Console. To run the Web Admin tool, run Windows Media Services Web Shortcut found under Administrative Tools. You will notice by default that SSL mode has not been enabled. This makes the web tool insecure by default. You can run the admin service via an unsecure connection via the links at the bottom of the page. To improve security, you'll want to enable SSL on the web admin tool. This is done through the ISS admin tool. If you are like me and press next next through the Windows Media Service install, the ISS console will not be installed by default, so you'll need to add it. To do this, open Server Manager and expand down to the ISS role. From the ISS role, select the option Add Role Services. This will start the wizard which will allow us to add the console. Scroll down to the bottom and select ISS Management Tools and add the required prerequisites if needed. Once the ISS Admin tool is installed, run it from the Start menu. To enable SSL, you need to add HTTPS bindings to the website. Expand down to Windows Media Administration site, right click it and select Edit Bindings. Currently, there is HTTP access, so I will need to add HTTPS bindings so I can access the website securely. Select the type of bindings as HTTPS and select a certificate to use. Once the bindings are added, you can remove the HTTP binding if you wish. This will ensure that only secure access is used. Next, go into SSL settings and switch on Require SSL. If you desire, you can also switch on 128-bit SSL security. This will require more CPU power to process your communication, but gives you much better security. Once I apply the settings, I can close the ISS admin tool and then try to connect up to Windows Media Services web admin tool again. You will notice I can no longer access the web page. To access the web page, I need to change the web address to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. Now that SSL is configured, I can select the link Administer Windows Media Server in Secure Mode. This will launch the Web Admin tool in Secure Mode. The web tool is preferred over wide area networks, otherwise you will find that both tools have pretty much the same functionality. In Windows Media Services, you can create a publishing point to present media to your user. A publishing point provides a URL for accessing content. These start with MMS and are in the same format as HTTP addresses. Consider this example. From Windows Media Player, I can open the URL to my published content. Once I press OK, Windows Media Player will connect to my Windows Media Server and download and display the content. Publishing points provide the address to access content. This content can be any content you want, from a live feed to a playlist to on-demand or random music. Let's have a look how to set up publishing points. To create a publishing point, 
First run Windows Media Services admin tool from administrative tools under the start menu. Expand under publishing points and right click publishing points. There are two options, one to create a publishing point using the wizard and the other using advanced options. I will select add publishing point wizard. In the wizard you can enter the name for the publishing point. I will just accept the default publishing point 1. Next, you can select the content you want to stream. The default option is encoder, which means the server connects to another computer which encodes the video and audio. This option is mainly used when providing live content. However, it can be used when the source is originating from videotape or DVD. The important thing to remember is another computer is encoding the data. The next option is playlist. This allows you to select a mixture of files and place them in one stream. For example, you could have music clips combined together into one playlist. The option one file attaches a single file to this publishing point. Lastly, you could have the file streamed from a folder. The files in the folder can be placed in order or the user can select a file from the folder. Next you can select to create a broadcast or an on-demand publishing point. The broadcast option is used generally for live content and gives you the options for unicast and multicast. On demand allows the user to select when they want to view the content and also gives them options like fast forward and rewind. If you select broadcast you will also get the options for unicast and multicast. Unicast is supported by everyone but uses a lot of bandwidth as each user gets their own stream to the server. Multicast allows multiple users to receive the same packets from the server or in other words, the same data is sent to many users. Keep in mind that the network between the server and your users must support multicast in order to work correctly. Microsoft also offers the option Enable Multicast Rollover. When this is selected, the server will switch to unicast if the client cannot receive the multicast, giving you the best of both worlds. On the next screen, you can enter the path for the data to be used for the publishing point. You can also select the option Enable access to directory content, which will allow the user to gain access to any of the files in that directory. The user can also use wildcards if they wish. If you only want users to have access to content that you make available, make sure that you switch this option off. Otherwise, a user can access any file in the folder. On the next screen, you can select if you want your broadcast to loop back to the start when finished. Also, you can select the option to randomize the order the content is presented to the end user. Remember that when you run through this wizard, some of the options may be a little bit different depending on what you choose. If you wish to record who is accessing your publishing point, you can switch on logging. This dialog allows you to verify your publishing point before it is created. Lastly, you may want to create an announcement or a wrapper playlist. I will cover these later on, so I will switch this option off. Notice also the wizard gives you the URL used to access the new publishing point. Your publishing point is now created. I can also create a publishing point by right clicking the publishing point and this time selecting the option add publishing point advanced. You'll notice again that I have the option for broadcast or on demand. Next all I need to do is enter in a name and a folder location for my content. That's all the options you can configure. Any further configuration must be done in the admin tool. If I wish to stop content from being distributed Right click the publishing point and select deny new connection. You can also duplicate, rename and remove the connection from the menu as well. If you look to your right, you will see the monitor tab. This gives you statistics about the current bandwidth and also the number of clients connected to your server. The source tab allows you to change the folder your content is coming from. You can also test your content as well as edit your playlists. You can start and stop the archiving process from here. On the advertising tab, you can add advertisements, for example commercials, to your publishing point. You could do this manually by adding the content to your publishing point, but this soon becomes tedious and time consuming. Using the advertising tab, you can add banners to your website. For example, on your website you could add a video displaying a commercial. Also, you can create wrapper ads, that is, an ad that appears before your video. You can even create a brief splash screen that would appear before every video is played. Lastly, you can also configure interstitical ads. These ads appear at certain times during your broadcast. For example, you may have one appear every three times an on-demand video is accessed. The announcement tab allows you to configure and set up announcements for your content. 
I will cover this later on in the course. Lastly, the Properties tab allows you to change properties in the publishing point. It is a good idea to go through these settings and have a look for yourself. But from here, you can set authorization and authentication options, bandwidth limits, and logging options. Using Windows Media Services, you can create what is called an announcement. An announcement allows you to create a file that creates a link to your media. The user can open the file and be directed directly to your server to play the media. Using announcements, you can create a playlist for your media on your server. Using announcements, you can play the media via Windows Media Player or even embed it in a web page. Let's have a look how to create announcements. To create a new announcement, first launch the Windows Media Services admin tool from the start menu. Expand down to the publishing point you want to create the announcement in and then select the tab Announce. You can see under Direct Connection the URL that the users can use if they wish to access the publishing stream directly. To create a new Unicast announcement, select the button Run Unicast Announcement Wizard. Once you start the wizard, the first screen allows you to change the server if you wish to stream data from another server. Next you can specify where to create the announcement file. I will leave this in the default location. There is also an option to create a web page that will contain the media that you want to stream. Once the page is created, you can modify it to meet your needs if you wish. Otherwise, if you tick the tick box, copy the syntax for embedding a player in a web page to the clipboard, the code that you need to display a video in a web page will be copied to your clipboard. All you need to do is edit the web page that you want to add the content to and then paste the code from the clipboard. On the next screen, you can change the metadata contained in the web page. This tells the user additional information about the web page. On the last screen, you also have the option to test files when the wizard is finished. I will leave this option ticked and then press finish. Now I get the option to test the announcement file and the web page. If I test the announcement, Windows Media Player will open and play the file. Remember, if you want to play video files in Windows Server 2008, you need to add the desktop experience feature. Now if I select the option to test the web page, Internet Explorer will open with the embedded video player. Once I accept the ActiveX authorization message, Windows Media Player will start up and play the video. That's it for Unicast. If I scroll down to the bottom, I can also run the Multicast wizard if Multicast is enabled for this publishing point. You may get a message asking you to enable the Multicast Data Writer plugin. You need this to run Multicast, so press yes if it appears. On the first screen of the wizard, you have the option of creating an NSC file and an ASX file, either together or separately. The first option allows you to create both files and also has the option to create a web page as well. The multicast NSC file contains details about the stream like its format. If you change any of the stream configuration, you will need to recreate the NSC file. The ACX file contains details like the location and server the video stream is on and which files to play. On this screen, you can add files or even add an encoder. If you are providing live content, you will need to enter the location of the encoder. In this case, I want to add the file pinball.wav supplied with Windows. You will notice that pinball is now added to the multicast stream. The next screen allows you to log usage of the stream. I won't worry about that for this example. Next you can change the location the files will be saved. Notice also I have the option to copy the syntax to the clipboard. I will also get a dialog asking if I wish to overwrite some files. These are the files I created when I ran the unicast wizard so I will press yes for these. The next screen will ask you how you want the user to access your multicast file. If you wish you can leave it on the default and the file will be placed on your web server. Otherwise, depending on your needs, you can place the file on a file server. Again, like the Unicast, you can enter your own metadata if you wish. The Archive screen allows you to create an archive video of your multicast session. You may want to enable this option for live broadcasts. What this essentially means is the live session is saved to the hard disk and then can be later played back on demand. That's it for multicast. Press the finish button and the multicast announcement is created. And that's it for Windows Media Services.